This video is sponsored by admirals.com where you can find answer of all your questions in simple and presentable way to grab maximum marks in your exams. Crystal field theory. Crystal field theory was first developed by physicist Beth and Van Valwyk in 1930. According to valence bond theory, according to valence bond theory, the bond between the metal and the ligand is covalent. But crystal field theory completely neglects covalent bonding and assumes that the bond is purely electrostatic or ionic. Crystal field theory considers metals as positive ions and ligands as negative point charges. Electrostatic force of attraction develops between the central positive ion and the surrounding negative ligand. Apart from the forces of attraction, repulsive forces also develop between d electrons of metal and the surrounding negative ligands. So, as the ligands approach central metal, the repulsion between negative ligands and electron of the d orbital increases. This increase in repulsion destabilizes the d orbital electrons and its energy is increased. This increased energy level due to negative field of ligand is called as barycenter. This is the average energy of all 5d orbitals. So even if different d orbitals experience different repulsion, the average energy or barycenter remains constant. If we put three axes in this molecule in the direction of ligands, then the effect of repulsion is more clear. Now, if you know the structure of the d orbitals, there are 5 d orbitals. The lobes of dxy orbitals are between the x and y axis. Similarly, lobes of yz orbitals are in between the y and z axis and the lobes of xz orbital are in between the x and z axis. This means in these three orbitals, none of the lobes is along the axis. All are in between the axis. Now, let's see dx square y square lobes. They are oriented in the direction of x and y axis. Similarly, the lobes of dz square orbitals are aligned in direction of z axis. So, these two orbital lobes are in direction of axis. So, when ligands approach in the direction of x, y and z axis, they will start repelling orbitals which are in x, y and z directions. And these orbitals are dx square y square and dz square. Remaining three orbitals will be repelled in lesser extent. As we know that more repulsion means more destabilization. That means energy of these two orbitals will be increased. This can be represented as Hence, you can see now d orbitals are split into two levels. The upper two orbitals are now having same energy. So, they will be called as doubly degenerate. And lower level have three orbitals of same energy. So, they are called as triply degenerate orbitals. This splitting of d orbital in two groups in presence of ligand field is called crystal field splitting. These two set of orbitals are now given a new name. The upper ones are called EG orbitals and lower ones are T2G orbitals. In next videos, we will only use these names for the D orbitals. So please try to remember them properly. The difference in energy between the two set of D orbitals is measured in terms of a parameter called DQ. It was randomly taken as total energy split is 10 dq. Now, as the barycenter or average energy is constant, the number of electrons with increased energy must be equal to the number of electrons with decreased energy. 
and therefore if two orbitals show increase of 6 dq at the same time three orbitals should show decrease of 4 dq then only the average of all five orbital energy will be equal to Barry center or average energy. Please note that each electron field in EG orbital will increase the energy of the molecule while each electron field in T2G orbital will decrease its energy from its Barry center. Therefore, the electrons will prefer to be filled in T2G orbital to make molecule more stable. This decrease in energy achieved by the preferential filling of electrons in lower line D orbital is called crystal field stabilization energy. In simple words, the difference of actual energy from the average energy or barycenter is called crystal field stabilization energy. So that's the basic principle of crystal field theory. In next video, we will discuss the extent of crystal field splitting in presence of different types of ligands. So if you like this video, please click on the like button and share with your classmates and teachers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos.